it's pretty rare for me to cover an acoustic guitar on this channel, and even rarer for me to cover a guitar that's made out of anything but wood. And you're getting both of those things in this video, because in this great big classy case, I've got an Enya X4 Pro acoustic electric guitar. This is the acoustic side of it, there's the electric side of it, and there is the hole that you put the cable in. But first, let's take a look at this case, because it's not going to get featured in the rest of the video, obviously. You want to know about the guitar. But before I put this away, look at this case! It's way too classy for me. I'm afraid to walk around with this. People are going to think I'm headed to the symphony or something like that. I'm not classy enough to pull that look off. <laughs> but seriously, like, it's a really high quality case. It looks like it's made out of fiberglass. It has that like fiberglassy scattered pattern on there. Who knows, maybe it's made out of carbon fiber too. Probably not though. I mean, maybe. It doesn't have it listed. <laughs> it doesn't have it listed on the specs what the case is made out of. So I'm just making assumptions here. I don't have it plugged in or mic'd up yet. So that sounds probably not completely representative of what it sounds like with my overhead mic picking it up. But I can tell you it sounds really good in room. plays really nice too. I've actually had the pleasure of having this around for a couple months now because I was all geared up to film it and do my demo and then I checked online real quick to see, you know, some specs and I noticed, oh, it's all sold out everywhere. I can't find it anywhere. And then I did a little bit of snooping and I realized, oh, Phil McKnight did a video on one of these like a week earlier. So of course they're all sold out now. So I had to wait a couple months <laughs> to get around to showing this to you, but they're available now. As of this video publishing, you know, maybe Phil McKnight will do another video and they'll, they'll all be gone again. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I'm doing a video too. Maybe you guys will snatch them all up and then Phil McKnight will be like, hey, how come they're all sold out? But anyways, let's take a look at what we have here instead of listening to me flap my gums about Phil McKnight. We've got an acoustic guitar made out of carbon fiber. You can see the carbon fiber top on here it has this kind of fun, like almost snake skinny pattern to the carbon fiber. It catches the light in fun ways as it moves around. That's either your style or it's not. It's got this really opulent, classy golden ring around the sound hole, offset sound hole here. So you get more sounds bouncing up into your face. I think <laughs> that's the way it works. Like I said, I very rarely cover acoustic guitars. So I'm wondering what important information I'll even be able to express about this thing. What do acoustic guitarists want to hear in a demo? What do they want to hear said? I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to explain what I've experienced with this thing. So you've got the carbon fiber top on here and then a carbon fiber composite for the back sides, neck, etc. Some really classy, smooth, slick looking gold tuners on here. I actually think these might be the same model of tuners that Ert has been using. I recognize that kind of smooth quality to the tuning pegs. Inya inlaid on the headstock there. I actually kind of like that headstock shape. Not bad. It's doing its own thing, but it's not wonky or weird or anything like that. It doesn't catch my eye in a bad way. In fact, it catches my eye in a good way. I like that. A little bit offset, a little bit non-traditional, but not too non-traditional. You've got a Graph Tech nut on here. I mean, you know, marker dots up and down <laughs> the fretboard. The fretboard is the same material as the neck. It is like this unibody construction. I understand the neck has an aluminum rod through it. I did make a very slight adjustment to the truss rod out of the box because the action, believe it or not, was just a little bit too low for me. It was buzzing out a few places, so I raised the action just to get it a little bit more comfortable to me. Something very interesting is that they've designed the fretboard with that upper fret access to float over the soundboard. It's not touching the top of the guitar. There's an actual gap in between the fretboard and the top of the guitar. I think the theory there is that it will allow 
the soundboard to resonate more freely and not have its resonance interrupted by a piece of neck and fretboard pressed against it. And you've got a bridge with the Graftec saddle on there, you know, your classic six pin sort of installation. On the side, you've got the electrics control. This is actually the previous version. The new version of this, the post Phil McKnight version of this, has a built-in tuner. This one does not have a built-in tuner. So I've got the old version. If you buy one of these, you'll have the new version. And like I said, there is the strap button and output jack. And what else? What else do you say about an acoustic guitar? Well, let, let, let's go through the electrics here, what I have on this one. This one has a tone control, a master volume control, and a mic level control. I believe it has a piezo bridge underneath the saddle here, and then it has a microphone mounted in the back right about there. I'll put a picture of the inside of the sound hold in there. It doesn't quite look like an apartment you can't afford. It, it looks like a dark, dark, plasticky room that you can't afford. <laughs> so yeah, you can blend in between the piezo and the microphone, and then there's built-in effects. You have two knobs here that give you two different reverbs, either room or hall, and then a chorus or delay effect on those. So I'll plug those in, and we'll get to hear all the sounds that this can make plugged in, and then I'll drop down a microphone, and we'll be able to hear what it sounds like mic'd up in a haphazard, sort of unprofessional way. <laughs> all right, is everything running? There we go. This is with the microphone knob set at 50% and the tone knob set at 50%. I don't think the new version of this has a tone knob. play guitar. Something I bring up with guitars from time to time is a pleasure factor. There is a pleasure factor to playing this guitar. It feels bright and a little bit alive in a way, you know? Uh, the, the neck and the frets feel really nice. It's just something you can pick up and feel immediately comfortable with. At least that's how I feel about it. I mean, everyone has different tastes, right? I'm not sure the look is really my taste. I don't hate it, but am I carbon fiber aesthetic guy? Are you a carbon fiber aesthetic guy, lady, person, animal, whoever's watching right now? I like the sound though. It does sound different to me unplugged than a standard acoustic guitar. It's almost like, because it's so even, it almost feels like acoustically it has a slight compression on it, if that makes any sense. I don't want to use the word clinical, but it feels really clean and balanced. Like sometimes I'll run into acoustic guitars, more traditional acoustic guitars, where I'm just like, yeah, it's got way too many low frequencies going on. I don't like that, it's too, it's too murky for me. And then sometimes I'll play ones that like, ah, man, it's just bright jangle, jingle, jangle, 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 and it's too much. Just like, it has a really nice, even balance to it. I feel like acoustically it projects a little bit lower than the acoustics that I'm used to. I mean, I'm, <laughs> this is not an acoustic guitar channel. I don't have the wide breadth of experience that I have, like say with, you know, some sort of surfy electric single coiled guitar. But 
but to my ear, it does feel like it's not quite as loud as a traditional, you know, wood acoustic guitar. It's not quiet. It's still an acoustic guitar. It still projects, especially with the big sound hole here. Just an observation. All right, let's start going through the knobs here. We'll check out the mic knob first. I'm gonna turn it all the way down so all you'll hear is the bridge pickup, the piezo. Piezo. Growing up in church and playing at church and hearing acoustic guitars played at church, that's a familiar sound. <laughs> a piezo acoustic electric guitar. That's the sound of youth group right there. But then let's bring in the mic all the way up. Just max it out. You get a much more natural acoustic sort of sound. I don't mind the piezo sound. I'm nostalgic for it. That does sound much, much closer to an acoustic guitar with a microphone on it. back to the midpoint on that microphone control. Back to all the way up. And all the way down. For a final demonstration of its range. Back to the middle. And we'll check out the range of the tone control just in case you happen to run across one of the older versions that has the tone control instead of the integrated tuner. I'll turn the tone all the way up. Now the tone all the way down. Usually up and down means darker or brighter, but in this case, I think it means more tone or less tone. <laughs> T-O-A-N, however you want to interpret that. Here it is in the middle again. All the way up. All the way down. I think middle's a good place to live. Maybe that's why they took it out. They're like, let's just leave this in the middle. And now on to the effects. Let's start with reverb because of course there is a room reverb. Put it up about halfway. That's plenty. I could pull that back even. Let's just give it a splash. This is like 30%. Crank it. Room reverb all the way up. With the mic on, you can tap it and do different effects. Here, I'll take the mic off and see what happens. Yeah. So if you're getting feedback, you can turn that mic down. Anyone watching this video is going to be able to tell that I did most of my acoustic guitar playing in the 90s. Nice 
sounding room reverb on there. Alright, let's move on to the hall reverb. Here it is at about 30%. reverbs sound pretty to me, they just have a slightly different voice. Here, we'll just crank the hall all the way up. two effects. You can leave the reverb on because there's two effects knobs. I'm going to leave it with a splash of that room. And throw on the chorus. You get to choose in between chorus or delay. We'll do chorus at about the 50% mark. There we go. Ready to do your 80s ballads? the chords to every rose has its thorn. All right, all right. I'll look it up. <laughs> it's always a good sign when your guitar YouTuber has to look up a song. G, C, D, E minor, C. Of course it is. I don't care about the verse. Give me the chorus. Every rose has its thorn. Every night has its dawn It's like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song Every rose has its thorn <laughs> Are you entertained? Is this a good video? Crank that chorus all the way up. Is that anything? Idea where I'm going with that. <laughs> Let's check out the delay. Now the delay controls the mix and the time, I think. It might just control the time. We've got a pretty quick delay. Let's pull it all the way fast. You just get a bounce off of it. Sounds like the mix is down a bit though. I think it does control the mix a bit. So we'll bring it up to about 50%. Turn the mic up and I bet I can sing into it. Hello, microphone. Oh, 
all you tappy tappers out there who like making beats with your instruments, you can use that. That's the little riff that's gonna sell this guitar. It's just flying off the shelves now. I wonder if Phil McKnight played that. What am I doing? I'm all over the map right now. Let's do the extreme range on that delay. See how long it gets. Feels like three or four hundred milliseconds. This is one of the few times where I'm covering a guitar that's microphonic, but it's supposed to be. <laughs> on there. I want to drop down a condenser mic to pick this thing up acoustically to attempt to give you an accurate or more accurate idea of what it sounds like unplugged. I am not a recording engineer. I don't know all the best secrets for putting mics on acoustic guitars. So this is just me just giving it a shot, just seeing what happens. Cause I very, very rarely throw a mic on anything acoustic other than my voice. And who cares how that sounds, right? <laughs> Have done that with the reaver pond <laughs> but there you go that's what it sounds like i hope anyways 
What do you think? What do you think about this instrument? These are uh, $8.99 on Amazon right now. I know there's a lot of choices out there these days for acoustic electric carbon fiber instruments, and this is one of them. If you're out there shopping for them, let me know in the comments how this ranks for you. This is my, you know, only experience with something of this style, with a carbon fiber acoustic electric guitar. I very, very rarely cover acoustic guitars. I very rarely play them in my personal life. But I can say that I've been enjoying this guitar. It feels nice. I think it sounds nice. It has a really nice, even tonality to it. It's got highs, it's got lows, it's got mids, and they all seem to be really well balanced against each other. There's, there's no like peaks or big like boomy lows or shrill brittle highs or anything like that played acoustically or plugged in. From my opinion, of course, like I said, I'm not the most experienced acoustic guitar gear reviewer demoer <laughs> out there. So absolutely go watch other people's videos if you're shopping for one of these things. Get a really nice balanced view of them. I know $8.99 isn't exactly like throwaway discretionary lunch money sort of stuff. So yeah, do your research. Come back and let me know what you think. I'm curious. I want to know what the consensus is because it feels like a high quality Great playing, great sounding guitar to me. But what do you guys think? That's what's important. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.